大家好，我是赵冰晶 Maggie， 欢迎您收看本周的每周华尔街节目。本周呢，我们是来到了拉斯维加斯。七月中旬的拉斯维加斯啊，是天气非常的炎热，但是呢，比天气更加炎热的是在正在这里举行的如火如荼的 Freedom Fest 峰会。好了，言归正传，来回顾一下本周的美股走势。那么受到中国 A 股的影响呢，本周的美股呢是受到了宽幅的震荡。中国 A 股啊是在中国政府一系列的救市政策之下，依旧是一蹶不振。那么三周呢是丢到了十三个希腊的 GDP， 同时呢希腊那边呢也是非常的让人心碎。本周啊原油呢是大幅的重挫，而美元呢是强势的回升。一起来看一下具体的情况。上周呢，我们是带大家回顾了在加州 Newport Beach 举行的投资人峰会。那么这次呢，我们再来看一下中文投资网的投资者关系主席 Clayton Miller 的精彩演讲。Last year, mainland Chinese tourists spent more than 100 million international trips, making number one tourist country in the world. The rich Chinese, on average, spend 16 percent of their assets and invest them overseas. 71% of Chinese actually measure their success by things that they own. Anybody been to South Coast Plaza or some high-end retail store? Look around. You'll see a lot of Chinese shoppers buying the high-end <laughs> merchandise. The reality is, last year China overtook the U.S. as the world's largest economy. Within the next 10 years, their population is going to grow by 350 million, and they will have 10 New York-sized cities. What does this mean? Be ready. We're talking about 18 billion in investable money. The question is, who's going to benefit from it? Who wants to benefit from it? It's a big opportunity. Not only do Chinese individuals like to travel and invest overseas, but Chinese government is actually encouraging people now to invest globally through the new program called QDII2. Before, if you're familiar with the Chinese government, they were real restrictive. On money leaving the country, you had to do some finagling and go through Hong Kong, and it was real limited on what you can do. But now the government is easing things up, and money starting to outflow through this new program. So let me summarize this here.、Um, this new program that the Chinese government is offering is for qualified individuals with a minimum net worth of only 160,000, and they can directly invest. In overseas investments, like we talked about, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, art, real estate, and commodities. So let me summarize this: the Chinese middle class is expanding, and they're getting rich. They are strong to the desire to invest overseas, and now the Chinese government is more open with their QDII2 program to investors investing overseas. This group of investors' demands are underserved. We believe, as do others, this is a huge opportunity. Why us? Our advantages. We were early to market. We've been in this market since 1999, and we've been serving this group for 16 years. We know what they like, and we know what they don't like. We're a U.S.-listed bilingual, bicultural agent that will bridge the gap. Between Chinese middle class and the U.S. investment service providers, we have a strategic media partnerships overseas in mainland China and here in the U.S. We actually were the first company to produce a TV show in mainland China reporting on the U.S. stock market on a government channel, which is very rare. So we've been very lucky with that.、Uh, it's a low competitive market, and we can get the job done. Talk a little bit about our executive team:、um, Warren Wang, CEO and co-founder; Brett Roper, COO; and Dr. James Torson,、uh, independent director.、Um, between everybody, we've got 30, 40 years' experience in real estate, the U.S. financial markets, and in、uh, high-tech arenas. So we've got the team to make it happen. I want to thank you all very much for listening to my presentation and your time. I look forward to meeting more of you, as I already have this afternoon and into tomorrow. Talk about the opportunities in China, and we're very interested in meeting with you some more. Thank you very much. China A 股的走势啊，是全球所有的市场呢都不能够与之媲美的。千股跌停、千股涨停的涨势呢是轮番上演。那么有哪些信息是你不能错过呢？一起来听一下 Warren 的演讲。
嗨，各位观众，大家好，欢迎来到美洲华尔街节目。那么今天呢，我正好在拉斯维加斯的 Plan Hollywood 的赌场的酒店呢，参加一个叫 Freedom Fest。那么这个讲座呢，有很多的不同的 topic。呃，今天早上，也就是周四的早上呢，呃，参加了这个 Paul Grubman 啊、呃，就是他是一个著名的诺贝尔奖的得主。的一个讲座啊，关于美国的一个整个的经济政策，呃，还有呢，昨天采访了这个 Barry， 大家会在随后的美洲华尔街节目当中看到。那么，呃，这里也是我的胸牌啊，非常高兴呢，能够和很多的投资专家呢有在一起呢交流。那么上周呢，我们讲到了中国股市对美国股市的一个总体的影响。那么我们也可以看到呢，中国股市啊跌的呢也很惨。然后呢，大概百分之五十的公司呢，在昨天就周二三的时候呢停牌了。那么我们讲的几个 ETF， 像 ASHR、CHAD、CHEU， 啊，波动都非常非常的大啊。那么美国股市呢，本周呢也出现了一个急速的一个波动啊。截止周四收盘呢，道琼呃纳斯达克总的跌幅呢是达到了百分之一点七三，高开低走。在中国股市周三啊周四暴涨以后呢，美国股市也高开了。高开两百多点，但是随后呢，啊、呃，最后涨了三十三点，道琼指数在一定程度上呢，说明受到中国股市的影响也非常大。那么最近我在《疯狂华尔街》节目当中呢，也跟大家谈到了美国股市将非常可能受到中国股市的影响，乃至希腊、波多黎各、原油等各方面的呃影响。呃，总总之呢，我个人觉得哈，就跟大家交流一下股市的这个走势啊，我个人觉得，呃。我个人觉得，就是说，可能我们的这个短期的调整呢，依然会在美股身上出现。那么，我建议大家呢，买入我的 favorite 就是 VXX 来做一个对冲。这样的话，就是大家不会受到这个突然的一个下跌。昨天 Barry 呢，在我的采访当中呢，也谈到了现在的黑天鹅事件。黑天鹅事件就是说，投资朋友都没有任何的准备的前提下，突然这个灾难降临了。那么 VXX 是一个能够为大家啊做一个对冲，在特殊的情况下呢，使得你的资产得到保障。那么我认为 VXX 在这个二十一呢，它会找到二十五。特别今天的走势，大家也可以看到，虽然中国股市的大涨刺激了美股走高，但是随后呢，我们相信美国股市本身的一些问题呢，使得这个呃整个的。股市呢是高开低走，所以呢，大家呢一定要从上周我们推荐了这个卖空中国股票到抄底中国股票，那我们今天的 focus 呢还是在美股这一块。我建议呢大家呢关注这个 VXX， 它是一个避险的一个非常好的一个工具。好，那么呃最后呢祝大家有一个愉快的周末，我们下期同一时间啊、呃、再见。下期我们会在 Money Show San Francisco。好，谢谢，拜拜。大家好，我是中文投资网记者 Laura。在这即将过去的一周，美股市场又出现了一些走势非常妖的股票。而今天我们要谈到的这一只，则是妖股中的妖股，因为它竟然在一个交易日内，股价上涨百分之七百八，然后又跌回来。这只股票究竟有什么故事呢？让我们一起走进今天的妖股雷达环节。六 D Global Technologies， 股票代码。SIXD 是一家科技顾问公司，它诞生于2014年的一次反向收购。当时 ，Clean Tech 收购了 Initial Concepts， 也就是后来的 6D。不过，后者其实才是真正的收购发起者。收购两千万美元债务产生的 Clean Tech 只是为了借壳上市，而当时 Clean Tech 最大的债主则是臭名昭著的 Benjamin Way 领导的 NYGG。这家公司曾因为一系列反向收购损害前股东权益而受到 FBI 的调查。在收购后 ，NYGG 成为了 Six D 最大的股东，而 Six D 为了还债，向 NYGG 发行的三千五百一十万股价格极低，仅为零点四五美元。受此影响 ，Six D 曾在去年六七月持续下跌。之后 ，Six D 的走势更让人捉摸不透，总是在横盘已久之后出现一次暴涨行情，这也让他们的股价从去年八月的低点不到两美。美元上涨到今年的八美元左右
。六月二十九日 ，Six D 宣布成为罗素两千、罗素三千指数的成分股，进而带动股价在六个交易日内上涨百分之八十。最奇葩的事情发生在七月九日周四，在开盘后不久 ，Six D 的股价竟然在一眨眼间上涨到了九十九美元，狂飙百分之七百八。由于五分钟内涨幅超过百分之十，自动停盘了五分钟，而五分钟后股价又恢复到了上涨前附近的位置。收盘收跌百分之三点八。从很多看盘软件和网站都没有将九十九美元纳入走势范围内看，九十九美元这一单交易应该是被无效了。这种情况的原因，我们猜测可能是乌龙只按错，也可能是机器自动交易失误，甚至是神秘买单。从公司本身来看 c k a l p h a 的一位博主指出，这家公司所处的 IT 资讯行业是一个低毛利率、竞争激烈的行业，公司没有任何自营产品 ，CEO 曾经投资失败甚至破产。他认为 Six D 有百分之九十七的下行空间。这几天啊，我们都是在 Freedom Fest 峰会上和华尔街的精英们探讨着股市。那么，有一位华尔街大红人呢，是用一张图表示了四次黑天鹅的事件，都有哪些呢？一起来看一下。Very glad you be here. So it's possible you can first、uh, introduce yourself to our audience. Okay. Uh, ni hao, Warren. Ni hao. Ni hao. My name is Barry Potikin, as you know, and、uh, I've been a, I'm a commodity trader and I'm a partner in a company that invests money. For investors in commodities, gold, oil, platinum, palladium, silver, corn, managed money. I've been a guest on David Letterman. I've been a guest on Oprah Winfrey.、Sure. I've been in People magazine. I've been on the cover of Success magazine. There's books written about me.、Mm -hmm. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the credentials. Movies. People made movies about me. Okay. And if you just put my name into Google, hundreds of pages will come up. Some in Chinese. Okay. There's a few colleges in China、okay. that teach my life story、okay. as an entrepreneurial、uh, subject. Okay. There's some colleges that do that here also. Okay. okay.、Uh, secondly,、uh, I would like to explain to our audience about this chart. It's look like、uh, you try to teach people what's the、uh, black swan or. Okay. What these are here is four、uh, black swans that happened、uh, lately. A black swan is an event that comes out of nowhere, changes everything, and in hindsight, people say we should have seen it coming. What is a black swan? 9/11 was a black swan.、Okay. The tech crash was a black swan. The 08 real estate crash, which spread around the world, was a black swan. Here are four of them. Sure.、Uh, I don't know if it's hard for your、uh, uh, for the audience to see, but、um, this is 1987. Was Black Monday? Was a black swan right there? And the Gulf War, when the first Gulf War started, is right here. This is easier to see because the stock market got bigger, so the swings are bigger. And、uh, this is the tech bubble which crashed. And if you could see this orange line. That's the stock market, straight down. The blue line is what I do: managed futures, went straight up. Managed futures is an asset class which is independent of any other asset class. It doesn't move、mm -hmm. with anything.、Okay. Often, when the stock market is down, what I do: managed futures is up. Okay. And this is showing that. And here's the big one. 08. 08. Okay. And、uh, look at what happened with that orange line. It goes all the way down. People got absolutely killed, and to see what happened to managed futures, it went up. Managed futures could be there is no guarantee you could lose money in any investment, even if you're in cash. You're speculating on currencies, so if, even if you're in cash, you could lose money. But often,、uh, managed futures, a little bit in your portfolio, can protect you in big crashes like this. Okay. So、uh, you think currently we might. Have some black swan coming in.、Oh. Okay, there's a number of black swans. There's one in particular which I want to talk about. But there's a number around the world. The Middle East is, it appears to be a black swan. Okay. You have Shia versus Sunni, Saudi Arabia versus Iran. These are people that really don't like each other. Okay. And I don't think signing a little piece of paper、okay. is going to make them roast marshmallows and have dinner together, and everything is going to be fine. Okay. World War III could come out of the Middle East. Okay. Wow. 
Yeah. ISIS, that's all I have to say about that topic. You put in the next 19 paragraphs. Could be a very big black swan. Um, how about global money printing on a massive scale? Okay. The world is awash in money. Mm -hmm. The financial system has problems that the markets are ignoring so far. But there is what I think a black swan right now before your eyes, and it's called the stock market in China. And you could see what's happening in the last week, sure. especially yesterday and today. Sure. This is a black swan event. It all Everything was going fine, and all of a sudden it came out of nowhere. There are two things which run the market, fear and greed. Fear is way more powerful than greed. Mm -hmm. And what you have now in China is fear. People are fearful. I don't blame them. I okay. would be too. Fear, people make decisions from the emotion with mm -hmm. fear. With mm -hmm. greed, they make a decision here. Okay. That fear in China could spread around the world like this wow. and be a worldwide black swan. Okay. It's totally possible. And the U.S. stock market's not doing that great now either. See how it was down today too? Uh -huh. So right now it's, it's very tricky. It's still not too late to diversify your portfolio. Okay. Thank you so much, Barry. Thank you for having me. Shishini. Shishini. 而在本次峰会上，我们也是与我们的老朋友 Mark Scolson 博士如约相至。Scolson 博士呢是一位中国通，那么很多人呢是将这一次中国的股灾与一一九二九年美国的大股灾相提并论。那么 Scolson 博士如何看待呢？一起来看一下短片。What do you think about Chinese stock market? Well, actually, I thought that uh, the the whole global economy is being and stock market in general is being affected by two areas. One is Greece, the problems in Greece, and that hasn't been resolved at all. And the other thing that everybody's worried about is the slowdown in the Chinese economy. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh, the Chinese have uh, created a bubble in the stock market, maybe similar to what we have in the United States. Uh, in terms of a bubble, so I think that people are really concerned. And when I read when the the average Chinese is now really getting into the stock market and opening up new accounts by the hundreds of thousands, uh, I thought that was a sign of the average uh, unintelligent investor getting in over his head. And so it doesn't surprise me to see a stock market crash, which is what we're seeing. And I think it's being affected all around the world. People are worried that a Chinese catching the flu will cause a uh, epidemic uh, or another crash worldwide. So it is something that the Chinese are working on to correct, to keep from getting uh, out of hand. But it is something to be concerned about. Well, I'm not recommending any Chinese stocks at this time, although I have a couple of friends who think that it's been oversold and that there would be some good uh, uh, stocks, internet stocks and public utilities, uh, maybe China Life. Uh, there's, there's a number of companies over there that, that are solid business companies, fundamentally sound. And uh, at some point, those will be worth uh, buying. Like, But right now, there's kind of uh, blood running in the streets, so uh, it's hard to say. It's like catching a falling knife. It's difficult to figure out the bottom. Do you think that the Chinese government uh, tried to buy the stock, uh, support uh, the whole uh, stock market? you think it can be supportable, or it's, uh, it's, it's a bad idea? Let's mm -hmm. put more leverage okay. into this yeah. and, and crisis. The, I, I do think that uh, uh, the government uh, needs to be careful that they don't uh, uh, intervene too much in the marketplace because that creates what we call moral uh, uh, moral hazard and so uh, then uh, uh, brokerage firms will become more risky knowing that the government uh, Chinese government might intervene and uh, and help bail out these brokerage firms so it's a very dangerous thing to do okay yeah uh, also you think that the whole market collapse uh, will uh, finally hurt the whole Chinese economic. It's uh, because just start from the stock market and cost the uh, reception back to uh, similar to 1929. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a 1929, but a 2008 situation is uh, because what happened was China had legitimate economic growth, uh, consumer spending, investments, uh, new technology, 
a huge demand for consumer products, including automobiles and housing, uh, and your infrastructure production and so forth. But you also, the Chinese also had a lot of uh, 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 money supply growth, which is artificial, uh, and, and they had artificial low interest rates. And those two factors create an imbalance in the economy that's not sustainable. So this crash was inevitable in China. We all knew it. We just didn't know when it was going to happen. And it's actually a very healthy thing to get back to uh, a rational approach to investing and to economic growth. Okay, so you saw the stock market in the U.S. today got hurt a little bit by Chinese news. Yep. So yep. you think uh, if China collapse or back into the recession, or the collapse of the stock market can cause the U.S. market crash too? Uh, especially the U.S. Mar uh, bond market have liquidity issues. Well, yes, the treasuries uh, market in China has a heavy position in treasuries, but I see no indication that they're selling treasuries. In any panic, there's a uh, investment. Money, they put money into treasuries, so okay. that's that's what I think is happening there. And no, I don't think it's going to be as serious uh, in the United States as in China, but we do live in a global economy and a global financial market, so. You know, we could have. We haven't had a correction in our own market of 20 percent or more in like five or six years. Sure. So yes, yeah, something like this, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, crisis or the Greek crisis could could cause our our markets to uh, to have a bit of a correction. But I don't I don't see it as a uh, total meltdown. You, you need more fundamental economic reasons, and maybe a, a actual recession in China could. Could cause that. That's that's always a possibility. Okay. Yeah. 节目最后来关注一下下一周有哪些值得关注的业绩。那本周呢已经是开启了新一轮的财报季。那么下周呢也会陆续的有一些银行股发布财报，像是 Bank of America、Goldman Sachs 等等，以及有一些耳熟能详的科技股，像是英特尔以及谷歌公司也会发布财报。想要随时随刻关注我们的信息，请扫描屏幕上的二维码，关注美国中文投资网的微信公众号。好了，本期的节目呢就到这里了，我们下。下期再见，拜拜。